All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So it's episode 17 of the Jet Central Let's Talk Jets uh, podcast. Tyson, what's up, dude? What a difference a week makes, huh? <laughs> you're, you're smiling, bro. Wait, wait. You're out of the darkness. The doom and gloom is gone. You're smiling now, right? Yeah. I mean, five and eight. It definitely, obviously, it's not like, or sorry, five and seven. Five and eight. Uh, five and eight. Oh, man, I thought we were five Come and seven. On, it would have been better. Two games, we need 500. <laughs> But now, I mean, it, it's always good to get a win, right? Especially a multi-score win against an AFC opponent, uh, one that's, you know, above average, uh, one that's also in the playoff race, right? I feel like we did a lot of really, really good things defensively on special teams. But Zach Wilson, obviously, is the man of the hour. Um, super efficient, putting the ball in play, 300 passing yards, no picks, had the fumble, but, you know, whatever, like, not that big of a deal. It came on a scramble, so... uh to me, man, Zach Wilson, especially after that report came out about him being like reluctant yeah, to play. Yep. Was it true? Was it not true? Who even knows? All I know is that Zach went out there, showed out, and I'm 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 happy for him. This was so desperately needed on so many levels, man. For the head coach, the quarterback, the coordinator, the defense. I mean, everybody can exhale now. Like, all right, we got off the snide here. They lost five in a row. They got, you know, now you now you kind of feel better about yourself. And you kind of feel really good for Zach, dude, because it was a week from hell, man. Like you had, you know, kind of questions in the locker room. Media's pounded on the fans are pounding on him. You know, everybody's kind of saying you need to change the scenery, all these things. And now it's like he comes out and pretty much gives everybody a middle finger. But like, here I am, man, 300 yards, play the best game of his career. And you just feel good for him, man. And you feel good for Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson. I mean, these guys, they want to win so bad. They deserve it. And it's just like you can see the the, the smiles on their faces pay dividends, dude. It's like it's just it's a, a feel-good moment. I think Jet fans need it too, right? Like we were tired of like – We've been doing the last three weeks of the show. This podcast has been brutal, dude. It's like we, we, we've been miserable. We've been sad. We've been angry. And now it's like, all right, there's things to feel good about finally. Well, dude, I mean, it's been it's been longer than three weeks because we had a, <laughs> we were on a five game losing streak, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. and even the week prior, you know, that Giants game wasn't all that convincing. No, you know, 13 to 10 in overtime. Um, so, you know, obviously, like there's been like a ton of storylines today. Playoffs are back in the picture. I have the Jets turn the corner. Yep. All that kind of stuff. I, I personally, I want to take, you know, I, I want to enjoy the win. Yes. You know, I want to look at what we did and say, okay, this was awesome. We have to, we have, we have to keep it going, yep. right now. What success going to look like ultimately against the Dolphins? Uh, maybe it's Zach just completing a bunch of passes. Maybe it is another three hundred yard performance. You know, personally, I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, well, now that Zach's coming off the best game, he has to go out and top it against a way better defense, against a way better team in Miami. Um, you know, oh, but so. See, but I have a question for you, though. Like, so what, what do you think was the biggest difference yesterday? Because according to the experts, the play calling was exactly the same. It was Zach's mindset where he was making throws, where to me, I think it's more than that. I think that's kind of. That was kind of the, the saying, the coaches were always right. It's always been the quarterback, where I think there's a lot a lot went into this because I think Zach was much more aggressive. He had, his, his reads were a lot quicker. He looked 10 times more comfortable. But what was the difference? Like how, how did this all change like overnight? Well, I do think the play calling was a little bit different. It was a little bit more aggressive. Yep. Um, we In the it, second it, half. Yeah, of course, in the second half. Because, you know, if we think back, we had zero at halftime. Yep. A lot of punts. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in the second half, like we we kind of like cut it loose. Yep. You know, I I know it's like such a cliche term, like we hear it all the time. But I, I mean, man, Zach really went out there and was just like, screw it. But was I, it? I'm playing, I'm playing my my style of football. At times, dude, he looked like the BYU version of Zach. See, and, and that's it's kind of a question where it's like, listen, I'm enjoying the win. Like, I'm not talking playoffs. I'm not talking. I'm like, build on it, beat the Dolphins, and we'll just keep riding. We'll kind of ride the wave. But my, I'm most curious about how did this change? And it's like, it's got to be more because. My honest feeling all along was that Salah kind of handcuffed Zach. Where like he was playing scared, he was playing scared to lose, scared to make the big, the big interception, the big turnover. And now it's like, and we've seen this in the past where like, the, the Chief games are a real good example. And the Jets started getting blown out. It's like you know what? Open the playbook up. Let's let it fly. Now the Jets' season's pretty much on the brink. Where it kind of most people think they're out of it, right? Four and eight. You're like ah, we're pretty much done. We're meeting you writing things off, talking draft already. And it's like all right, playbook opens up a little bit and. The first half, they were still kind of conservative because on third down, they're still throwing short of the sticks. And you're like, come on, stop doing this. Meanwhile, the Texans were a lot more aggressive. The second half, it was almost like somebody said, cut the nonsense out here. Like, enough. We are four and eight. Open it up. Be like, something changed in the second half, dude. And I'm kind of curious 
Do you think it was a solid thing? Was it a hacky thing? Did Aaron Rodgers be like, what are we doing here? Like somebody let this kid throw the football. Like, what do you think was like the deciding thing that made this actually swing in a better direction? It's tough. It's tough to really put your finger on it. But, you know, when you look at how special teams played, I mean, Zerline was perfect. I think he yep. was three for three on extra points, three of three on field goals. Yep. Morstead was fantastic. Yep. Yep. Houston back. Punt coverage was excellent. Right. You look at where Houston started their field position. It was like 20, 25, 26, 8, 5, 2. Like yep. they were backed up all day. The defense did their thing, right? Well, McDonald had a sack, and Bryce Huff had a sack, and Solomon Thomas had one. like defense, special teams, they showed out. But offensively speaking, you know, like it, the offensive line wasn't that great. Mm -mm. Zach still was sacked four times. Yep. We still couldn't run the ball. Mm -mm. I think. It was a combined 50 or 60 yards from Brees and Dalvin Cook yep. over 17 carries. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't really, you know, this massive change offensively where everything was firing on all cylinders. I don't think Lazard had a catch. He's terrible. You know, so it was really like Wilson just being super efficient. Garrett Wilson had over 100 receiving yards. Conklin made a, you know a couple of sweet plays. Rucker had a you know sweet grab as well. Yep. But it what to me it wasn't like. You know, this met like we saw a bunch of different things just like going our way. Like, we couldn't run the ball still. We couldn't really yeah. protect the quarterback. We couldn't really open up holes in the running game. It just so happened that Zach was clicking. And the to me, at least, the play calling was a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, because uh, they were going, because in the first, I mean, I, I forget all of it, but I think in the first half, they're going like run, run, third and long pass. Mm -hmm. It was getting really frustrating. I, I could be wrong, but I think they opened the third quarter with like 10 straight passes or something like that. They they were literally passing on every down, but it was like you saw more movement. You saw more like – and they were – it seemed like they were featuring Garrett Wilson more. They're kind of like, you know, we're going to get you the ball. Like we're going – you are our best – one of our best players. We're getting you the ball. Brees Hall, okay, we can't run the ball. We're going to put the ball in your hands out of the backfield then, but not the same old screen pass that everybody expects. It was like misdirection, change it up. You know, it was a better flow in the offense, which was interesting. And then you got like – it's, it's interesting because we always talk about it. You know, feature Garrett Wilson, get Brees Hall involved. Conklin over the middle is always going to be there. Use more Rucker. You know, Uzama got hurt. Rucker's going to be there for you. But they used everybody, dude. And it was refreshing to see. And you got Randall Cobb scoring touchdowns. Like, I know a guy who's still on the team anymore. Like, he's been irrelevant. And it's just – but I'm curious what happened at halftime. I really am because they, something changed where they're like, you know what? Go out. And if you lose a game by interceptions, we don't care. Like, throw the football. Either We're going we're gonna to sink or swim here. And I wish they had that mindset – in the in mindset in the Patriot game and the Falcon game and the Raider game. And it's like the could have should haves, but like, we've been saying this for weeks, bro. Like everybody's been saying, like, I'd rather see Zach go down in flames than watch some of the worst football we've ever seen in our entire lives because it's ultra conservative. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those, to me, it kind of felt like one of those games where, you know, like it, almost like uh NBA, right. You're down by a ton. You're down by 25, yeah. 30. And you just start hucking up threes. Every possession, just boom, boom, boom. Yep. All of a sudden, they start falling. Yep. And you cut the lead from 30 or 25 down to like 13. And you're like, whoa, all of a sudden, all of our shots are you know sinking. Yeah. We're back in this thing. But how do we get here? We just started playing loose. Just, hey, we're down by whatever. You know, yep. kind of like the Jets are, you know, nobody's talking about the playoffs anymore. They're four and eight. Yep. Zach already got benched. You know, what are they going to bench him again? He doesn't really care. Whatever. I'm going to go down playing my style of football, which is throwing it, using, showing off my arm strength, yeah. showing off my, you know, mobility and whatnot. Um, I'm hoping it continues, man. I, I really hope we don't revert back to the yeah. same stuff, which, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit nervous of, but I'm hoping that, you know, yesterday, yesterday was a wake up call to Hackett and, you know, to everybody offensively. Well, I think I think the cutting of Tim Boyle's wake up call too to this team, where it's like, listen, Zach is our best chance to win right now, excluding Rodgers, of course, because I think they realize how bad Tim Boyle was. You saw how bad Trevor Simeon was, so it's like, you know what? He gives us our best chance to win. The locker room knows it. I think the very telling moment in the game was when Zach fumbled, and it was like, oh, could this be the turning point of the game where the Jets go right back down? They and, it, and, you, and you literally saw Quentin Williams walk over to him and be like, hey, man. Like the team kind of rallied around Zach. Like almost kind of like, you know what, man, we got your back because what you're dealing with is nonsense at this point. Like it's unfair what's going on. And they kind of like in the like, you know, they, they quit on him last year. But I think this week they kind of rallied around him. They're like, listen, man, we're in this together. We see you fighting. You're putting up points. Like we we want to help you now. You know what I mean? So maybe, and now it's like you're only as good as your last performance. So now you're like, everybody's feeling good. You see all these stories like, I'll oh, bring back Zach next year, whatever else. And I'm like, no, 
week to week. But now for the Dolphin game, it's like build on it, man. Right. Build on it. Like just try to bring that same mindset to the game. Like don't, you know, don't be concerned because they're a better team. Have that same like kind of, you know, open minded set. We're like, go, go out to win the game. Like this is literally your last chance to stay relevant. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. I, I mean, at the end of the day, Tim Boyle, Zach Wilson, Hackett, however you feel about the offense, yep. injuries, all these solid, all these different things. The fact of the matter is, the game plans, the offensive game plans for, through the first thirteen weeks, sucked. Yep, it's coming out slow every single week, yep. struggling offensively yep. every single week, hardly getting in the end zone, struggling on third downs, all these different problems. Those are facts. That's not how I feel. Those are facts. The numbers yep. back it up. The eye test back it up. So yesterday, same kind of deal. But like you mentioned, you know, there was a shift at halftime. Yep. We need to have that same approach. We cannot yeah. go back to the same, you know, not not saying it, you know, it's just ironically saying it, not going back to like the same old Jets uh, mentality going into games. Because the Dolphins, like, I don't want to sit here and be a downer or anything like that, but the Dolphins are a better team than Houston. Oh, get the best time. offensive football. They get a best, better defense. We're going on the road. Um, you know, I hope we don't get too big headed over the win or anything like that. Or, you know, I understand that you know uh, vibes are positive. That's great, but you know, I, I really feel like we need to hit this game with that underdog mindset again. Yeah. Right, backs against the wall. Everybody's counting us out. We got to go out there and just, just you know, if we're going down, we're going down, throwing it a lot pushing the ball down the field, trying new stuff, as opposed to going down, doing the same run, run, play action, get sacked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Like, you want to see, like, because the defense has kept you in every game, for the most part. They're, they're always going to be. And, you know, something I want to talk to you about, too, is, like, you know, how many guys do you think make the Pro Bowl on defense? Because, what, like, yesterday was a tough evaluation because Tank Dell was out. Nico Collins got hurt early on. But the fact remains that Sauce and DJ Reed are playing at a very high level, man. They are two very, very good corners. The Quinn Williams, like how many, how many Pro Bowlers, like legit Pro Bowlers, you think are on defense right now? It's tough because you know the Pro Bowl is like a fan vote thing right now. Um, I think Quincy Williams definitely. Yep. I think CJ Mosley deserves to be there, but realistically speaking, probably just those two. Um, Would put Sauce in. I. It's tough. It's tough because I look across the AFC and th there's some good corners and yeah. other, you know, players that are, you know, standing out obviously at edge and whatnot uh, that the, you know, Khalil Mack is having like an insane season. Yeah. There's a lot of different, you know, I, and it's not, just, it's not a shot at, you know, the Jets players or anything yeah. like that. It's just like, it, it just speaks volumes about how good the AFC is from top to bottom. Now, how um, what would you, what do you think about Quentin Williams? Cause Quentin Williams was incredible yesterday. He was an absolute wrecking ball yesterday. Oh, but you, he gets double teamed. He gets triple teamed. Is he still like last year? He had the big sack numbers. That's like Sauce. Sauce doesn't have the big interception numbers. Quinn doesn't have the big sack numbers. Do you think Quinn is like at a Pro Bowl level or no? I personally would put him in there mm -hmm. because he's doing stuff that the numbers, you know, that the stats aren't showing. Wow. Right. If you're a defensive coordinator, whether you're Ulbrick, Sala, you know, Fangio watching the Jets defense, you know, this yeah. upcoming week. You're watching Quinn and you're like, this dude is dominant. But again, the Pro Bowl is is kind of about numbers, yeah. that kind of thing. And you know, if you're a Ravens fan or a whoever, a Steelers fan, Texans fan, you're you're not gonna Quinn's numbers aren't jumping off the page. You're gonna look at the sacks and be like, oh, he's having a down year. Nope, not gonna vote for him. Yeah. So it, it, it's tough. But now that you mentioned that, I kind of want to look up the leaders right now. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation because the Jets defense has been they're getting no support from their offense whatsoever. And, you know, week in and week out, they're stifling. They're, you know, quarterbacks are getting, what, 120 yards, 130 yards. So, and, like, the guy that I love the most out of all of them is DJ Reed because DJ Reed is an unheralded leader that's doing so many good things and he gets no attention from anybody. So I'm sure the fan voting is not going to get a lock. He's not a popular name, but he's a quality corner, though. Yep, yep, I agree. DJ Reed was still, like, looking back, I mean, we, we kind of talked about this, like, when he initially signed Bub. I mean, man, what a steal for 11 mil a season. Like DJ Reed has been totally worth every single penny. Oh, he's a leader. He's a tremendous mentor for Sauce as Sauce is learning the ropes in the NFL. And he gets a lot of heat because everybody, so if, if quarterbacks go away from Sauce, he's getting tested. And the one guy we don't talk about enough is Michael Carter, man, because he's been phenomenal in the slot. Like if there's a guy that like, he's like an un, another unheralded guy, like the whole Jets secondary, all the corners are legit. Yep. 
Yep, exactly. All right, so I'm trying to find the uh, the leaders here, uh, and it's you know NFL.com only has like the one player at each position, and right now it's Jalen Ramsey. Really? Leading for, yeah, leading for. But I mean, it's weird because he's been out for so. He I mean, what Pro Bowler? Yeah. You know, so personally, I, you know, I'm more concerned with All Pro. Like that's yeah. the, the that's the money making yep. uh, title, right? If you're an All Pro, I don't care if you're 13, like. That's a sweet thing to have on your resume. Yeah. So is Michael Carter in the last year of his deal right now? What what year is he in? He's in his third so, year. Yeah. So he, I believe, was a fifth round pick. Yep. Back in the Zach Wilson class. So he's uh, in for contract in, then, right? Uh, yeah. Let me just double check because I know he's he's you know obviously being a late round pick, he's hardly getting paid anything. Um, I can he's double check the uh, the contract length right here. Give me one quick sec. If you look at what he's bringing to the table, when you have Sauce Reed on the outside, they challenge him on the inside. But dude, if he's oh. on a last year's deal, dude, like, you know, everybody's talking about Huff. I think Carter is a vital piece to get back in the, you know, a guy you want to get in that good three year deal done with. For sure, dude. I mean, Carter's been unbelievable, especially for like a later round guy. But now he's under contract for uh, next year. So undrafted free agent in 2025 at age 26. Oh, good. Perfect. Yep. I do think Whitehead is a free agent, though. Which I would be totally fine upgrading there. Yep. Um, I'm okay letting him walk, but uh, no, I mean, I mean, really, to to kind of just scan through the defense, like it's a great unit. I want to keep as much continuity as possible mm -hmm. and not swapping, you know, guys in and yep. out. Uh, just like one or two positions, and they're probably going to do that. You figure because Carl Lawson will be gone, but Will McDonald's coming. Will McDonald had a sack yesterday. He's he's playing well. You got Jermaine Johnson, Bryce Huff's a piece you want to keep. But the interior of the line, you got what Quentin Williams, John Franklin Myers, all those Simon Thomas. Those guys are all going to still be there. You know, Michael Clemens, the linebacker, Sherwood will be around. Uh, Mosley's the interesting one because of his contract. They keep redoing it. It seems like every year. But Quincy Williams, like it's just, I think if anything changes, it'll be the safety position. I mean, Tony Adams is still really young, but like I said, White could go. They'll probably bring Ashton Davis back. You know, maybe I don't know what they do with Chuck Clark. If, I don't know what they're going to do with him. Yeah, I think, uh, dude, like if we had a game changer in the back end of the defense, yep. that would be insane. Yep. Insane, yeah. man. When you, and you look at that and you look at the you know the offense where you're starting to see like the pieces that we have and don't have where Lazard right now is just an, is an afterthought. I mean, he's not really contributing much at all. But you love what you saw to Gibson again yesterday. Like Gibson's coming on, another touchdown yesterday. He's, you know, for an undrafted guy, man, he's like starting to figure out the offense making plays. Breeze, who I thought was banged up, looked great running the ball. You figure Dalvin Cook's going to be gone, and you wish that Izzy would see more time. Like when Brees and Dalvin were both hurt, you're like, oh, great, Izzy time. Like you will finally see the ball more, you know what I mean? But you like to – hopefully they can find a way to get him more carries these last four games. You know what I mean? You just want to see what he can do. Yeah, and you also – you know, like especially if the Jets are – you know, if they end up being out of it, yep. you, I don't want Brees Hall taking extra hits and just having more load and responsibility. You know, if Dalvin's going to ride out the season – you know, he's not going to be released. Obviously, we're past the trade deadline. Yep. I would I would be totally open to giving Izzy a lot more experience as the season goes on. That way he's more primed for next season. And then it's also a win-win because Brees is now, you know, kind of not necessarily taking a back seat, but he's not going to have as much. He's not going to be as beat up. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing, the other play we haven't really talked about a lot is Joe Tipman, man, where he's finally at center where you want him to be. He's playing well, and that's kind of the guy you want. Like, let that be the anchor for the next five years or ten years. Like, have him set at center, get him a, get as many you know reps he can this year. So going to next year, like, all right, we have our center. We know who it is because now apparently McGovern's out for the year, which is fine. Let Tipman play. But the player I'm most curious to get your take on is Becton because the offensive line I thought was better yesterday, but Becton had an average game. I thought he was okay. I think Zach ran around a lot, uses his legs perfectly. But is Beckton the kind of guy where you're you're not? I'm not franchising him. I won't do that. How do you how do you handle him? Do you offer him like a one year, two year prove it deal, or do you say, hey man, go test the market, let us know what you get, come back, and we'll see if we match the offer? Like, how would you handle Beckton? I think I would give him a maybe a one one year contract, a cheap one, maybe maybe you know like a like a one year nine mil, but like three of that is guaranteed or four of that is guaranteed. Cause I don't view Becton as like the guaranteed go-to starter. Right. I think he's, it, it's just like the injuries, you know, like it, it's just, it's too tough to bank on like, cause he's missed time this season. Yep. Right. And I don't know. It's, 
personally, I just want that that long term answer there. And, and I tackle, think right? yeah. yeah, that's what I'm targeting in the first round. Um, you know, I, I know there's some free agent talks and stuff like that. Like the Jets are going to spend money on the offensive line. I think the first round needs to be offensive line, 100. percent Yeah, I think that's the one thing you look at even from yesterday's game is just like the offensive line play because the Jets can't run the football. So it's like, all right, you know, now you have your quarterback running around doing things. You don't want that next year. You want to have that stout offensive line. Dwayne Brown's going to be gone. I honestly think Beckham's going to be gone too. Carter Warren being hurt kind of sucks because you want to see him on the field getting that experience they didn't get because he didn't play in training camp. You know, I mean, he wasn't there in the preseason. So if he can get valuable game reps, you can assess what you have. Like, all right, we know what he's good at. We know what he's not good at. What can we train him in the offseason so next year he's better prepared to play? But that's kind of my concern is like the tackles. Even Max Mitchell hasn't been that great. He's been really inconsistent. I think that you probably need two tackles. Oh, yeah, 100 I mean, if Becton and and because Brown's not going to be back. Nope. I'm if I'm Douglas, I'm getting three. Yeah. I'm getting three tackles, dude. Uh that's with Mitchell and Warren on the roster. So I'm probably drafting my future left tackle mm -hmm. at wherever, uh, in the top 10 or 12 or wherever the Jets finish. And then I'm probably signing one of the better right better or best right tackles on the market yeah. to come in and step in immediately. And then I would get a veteran backup uh swing guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's personally what I would do. Uh not, you know, necessarily saying I'm right or anything. That's just my preferred way. I would rather overspend on the offensive line and be uh okay and I would rather just be safe than sorry because I don't want to repeat of this season. I mean Douglas has been here since 2019 and yet we're still having offensive line issues. Yeah. So no, I could believe so now the big topic of today, and I tried to avoid social media because I'm just like I just want to enjoy the victory today. I want to enjoy it. Like, hey, I want to see you smile. I could smile and not deal with nonsense, but the big thing was, oh, Zach earned his way back for next year already. I'm like, okay, I, I love the way the kid played last yesterday. It was phenomenal. But one game does not offset the last 11 games we saw or 10 games or the last two years or whatever the hell it's been. Like, it's not it's not enough for me. But you want to see him build off it going forward. And now, do you see a scenario? This kind of reminds me of Sam Darnold when he, had the, when he ended the one year really strong with like three or four really good games. If he has, a, If Zach has a scenario like that where he lights it up the next three, four games, do you like, hey, man, you know what? We've got to bring him back. Or do you say, you know what? That's really great you did this. Now your trade value is high. Change the scenery, and away we go. Like, how do you – is there a way that Zach plays himself onto the team next year? Um, Yeah. I, I mean, I think – well, right off the bat, if Douglas stays uh, and Wilson looks good this season, I think he's going to stay because he's under contract. You know, it, it's going to be that fourth year. So he's going to be here. He's going to be getting a ton of money because of his draft status where he was picked. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers coming back. But I think if I'm Douglas then, you know, if Zach looks great, A-Rod is, you know, fully committed on coming back, I'm still going out and signing a veteran. You have to. Like, th that's the part. I mean, you look at what some of these guys are going for. Three, four million bucks. Yep. So, you, so, in your, so what you're saying is – he he has to to me he has to, yesterday was great but you can't expect that every week for the next four games that's not going to happen but you want to see fairly high level quarterback play the next four games or at least eight through the next four to say you know what this warrants you coming back we'll we'll give you you've made enough progress you figured out the offense you look a lot more comfortable you got your confidence back that's enough to bring you back that's kind of how you're looking at it uh kind of I mean I'm not really. I'm listening to offers with anybody on this Jets team outside of AVT, Hall, Gardner, Garrett Wilson, DJ Reed, Quincy, and Quinn Williams. Yeah. And, of course, you know, the edge rushers, the younger edge rushers. Yeah. But everybody else, you know, I, I'm picking up the phone, who, whoever it may, may be. Um, that's just me, though. So for every, everybody else is kind of – like if I, if, if I get a good offer for Zach, whether he looks great or doesn't, I'm probably going to take it because at the end of the day, we're not talking about him being the starter next season. We're talking about if he could be the backup. So luckily we don't have to make that decision now. Let's yep. just, you know, kick our feet up and see how he performs. Yep. Cause who knows, maybe after Sunday, people are going to be like, Oh, this guy's terrible. Maybe yep. after Sunday, he, you know, he goes out and dominates and it's just like, Whoa, hold on a second. Yep. Maybe we got something here. But and then we just we just have to play the waiting game, you know. The good news, I think, we'll have the answer to this question as the weeks go on. Yeah, one, yeah, that's why it's like some of the takes today. It's like you know, like winning is a great deodorant. We always talk about it. The Jets win, everybody's great, 
you know, Sal is great. Douglas is great. Zach Wilson's great. We're a great team. Everything's wonderful. But it's like, all right, let's let this digest a little bit because if you if you bomb against the Dolphins, then we're back to like, oh, everybody sucks. Cut everybody. But uh, it's an interesting conversation. But I'm, I'm still where you are. I don't really care how good Zach plays the rest of the way. A part of me thinks that as him and his agent will probably go to Jets and be like, you know what, man? We want out. Like, we want to change the scenery. You bench me three times, whatever it is. Like, we appreciate all you've done for us, but we just want to get out of here. I kind of, I kind of think they're probably going to do that. But if they do stay, they, they want to stay, no matter how good Zach plays, I'm still bringing in somebody between him and Aaron Rodgers because we don't want to be in the same spot we're in this year, next year, with pretty much it's going to be a sell your soul year where they're going to go all into when, you know, win a Super Bowl next year. So. Yeah, let me quickly uh, look at the free agent list of quarterbacks. And, you know, obviously with backup quarterbacks, they're everywhere. They're a dime a dozen every free agency. Period. You see freaking Flacco, dude? <laughs> Killing it, man. Killing it. It makes no – it's only the Jets, dude. You're sitting here. We've been watching dreadful football for weeks. Flacco comes in. He's lighting it up. Like, you got to be kidding me. Okay, man. Jeez. All right. Here, here's, here's the list. The Jets will be fine with or without Zach. Quickly go through them. Kirk Cousins probably going to be a starter somewhere. We'll leave him out. Ryan Tannehill, Jacoby Brissett. Tyron Taylor, Marcus Mariota, Sam Darnold, Jameis Winston, Drew Locke, Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, Tyler Huntley, Teddy Bridgewater, Josh Dobbs. We're fine. Uh, we're, I, we'll, we'll be fine, I think. But who knows? You look at last year's, it's like the same amount of guys, and yep. Douglas didn't sign any of them. Well, I guess outside of Tim Boyle. but I think he learned his lesson this year, dude, because the Jets have been scrutinized you know, all over the world at this point. But you know, how Joe Douglas handled this? I think you know this realize, and I just I think the whole thing is will Zach be here or not? There's be somebody before him, but uh, the way everybody's talking about it, it's just so wild to see how the next four games play out. I mean, it's exciting. Like it's nice to say going to the Dolphin game, we're like, you know what? You you're you're kind of excited to see what happens if they can find a way to win this game. Things get really crazy because they have the whole Aaron Rodgers rumor for Christmas Eve against the Commanders, which would be off the charts. Then you're just then it gets wild, dude. It's just the only thing you wish you wish. The commanders game was the next game, like because you got to win the next four. You wish the next one was another easy, not you know, perceived easy one. Get the dolphins a little bit more, like get Zach to have back to back good games, then play the dolphins. But uh, it's interesting, man. Yeah, dude, because I believe Washington is the 31st ranked defense in the NFL. So, you know, theoretically, we should have some success there if we kind of keep up the space. Uh, but Miami's gonna be tough, man. I, like, you know, we keep talking about the AFC being really good. You know, a part of that is, uh, or you know, um, you know, a result of that is AFC teams not really letting off the gas pedal. You don't have those two teams at the top pulling away, or you know, at the end of the season, are they going to rest, rest their starters? No, this is like, a, you know, everybody's cannibalizing each other for these seats. It's um, wild, dude. And a lot of teams are dealing with backup quarterbacks now. You got Kenny Pickett's hurt. You know, Browning comes in for the Bengals. He's playing incredible football. It's just like it's like a war of attrition at this point where all these teams are so banged up. It's everybody's trying to find a way to win. The Bills get a big win last night over the Chiefs. So it's like they're all in that big bunch of mess. And this is like, and we talked about it when like when it happened. Like that Patriot game com comes back to haunt you. You win that game, it's an AFC game. Now you have six wins. It's like that one. To be you know, just in the mix, it's always that one game always bites you in the ass. And the Jets have a couple of them this year, like the, the Chief game. I'm not the Chief game. The Raider game, the Patriot game. It's like, oh, even the Falcon game was a wasted opportunity. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. I mean, it's tough to, like, looking back, like, looking at how New England actually is. Yeah. You know, because I feel like they're better probably at this point with Zappy moving forward. So we'll probably see a better Patriots team in whatever it is, week 16 or whatever, uh, compared to week – four or three yep. i think it was week three, three yep. uh which is always tough and salah's winless against belichick so you know you never know i, I really don't want to look down the schedule too far mm -hmm. i'm just you know it's one win let's take the win yep. let's you know put it behind us and focus on miami and come up with the same mental attitude from both players and coaches now what is your take and this, this is a fun conversation to have now because it's not happening yet sure. if aaron Rodgers is available christmas eve what do you do because does, do the Jets have to win in Miami to play Rodgers, or it's win or lose? Nobody cares. He's ready to play Christmas Eve. He's playing. Like if you're if you're Joe Douglas and Salah, what are you doing? I don't think I'm playing Rodgers. Um, now, if you go out there and you beat Miami, and you know the ball is bouncing your way with you know a couple other teams in the AFC, then you're tempted to. 
Yep. But then it comes back on Joe Douglas where it's like, you know, you still look at the offensive line. It's banged up. I think I, according to uh, Samini, uh, the Jets rolled out their ninth straight different offensive yeah. line yesterday. Like that's that's no good. So what's, yeah, what's your answer? Man? What's <laughs> multiple times. It, it's just a risky game, you know, like. I, I I wish we had some more depth on the offensive line. Yeah, like it's it's kind of it's kinda, I guess it's kind of how Zach plays against Miami. If Zach plays really good, well against Miami and they win that game, you're like, all right, he's played two games in a row. Maybe you don't have to rush Rodgers back as fast. You feel how like you have a level of confidence against the Commanders. Maybe you can buy. Then it's like the Browns are tough as hell. That's a you know a tough game at night. I think it is too. So it's a tough because like a part of you is like as a fan, you're like, man, it'd be awesome to see Aaron Rodgers come back. If we're still in the mix to make the playoffs, he comes back. We could save our season. But then, like the cynical Jet fans, are like, oh god, he comes back too early. He's going to get hurt. It's going to make it all worse. Or he's going to play poorly because the offensive line, like you mentioned, it's like, what's the? You know, kind of weigh the pros and cons. I think it almost seemed like the, the cons almost outweigh the pros at that point. Agreed. I, I think at the end of the day, also, you know, it, it's like if Wilson played great yesterday and he plays great against Miami, and you pull him. For and you know Rogers, who isn't really you know, it's not like he's taking first team reps in practice. There is going to be a rust factor there. So, you know, he might come back and look good against the Commanders, but and, and actually, you know, I, I know the Commanders aren't really that great team rankings wise, but like a matchup to matchup, uh, you know, if you look at just names on paper, like Deron Payne. Jonathan Allen going up against like Chris Glazer and rookie Joe Tipman, yeah. that could be that that's notable, you know, to talk yeah. about. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, personally, I'm sitting Rogers, and I, I, I think another, you know, again, another argument: Do you pull Zach Wilson, who's finally playing good? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I just think the Jets are in a tough spot because if Rogers has his mind hell bent on something. I think he kind of runs the organization. He didn't get what he wants. Like, listen, I'm medically cleared. I'm ready to play. I think he had it marked on his calendar. It was like, you know, December 24th. This has been his goal all along. He won the practice by his birthday. He did that. I kind of think he walks in the office and says, I want to play. I think they tell him, no. He's like, what do you mean, no? Like, this is, you know who I am? Like, I'm Aaron Rodgers. Like, I am like I am your franchise right now. I, I don't know if they have the ability to tell him, no. That's the, that'll be the most fascinating thing. Yeah. It's tough because it's not a guarantee that Rogers comes in and just starts lighting it up. Nope. You know, there's a there's a chance that he comes in and is getting rushed like crazy. There's a yep. chance that he comes in and you know the the record time Achilles at 40 in a cold weather game it, for a guy who hasn't really been practicing all that much, like you know, again, like live bullets first team, that there is going to be somewhat of a rust that he has to shake off. Yeah. You know, and if he does play poorly and Zach is playing, has been playing good, you know, it's just a, like a weird dynamic. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be really, really interesting. It's just, it's fun to have these conversations. And I guess, you know, like once the Miami game, like we'll probably talk this ne next week, like next Monday, be like, Hey man, <laughs> Rogers is probably gonna be ready another week. How do we handle this? You know, it's like only the jets get in these spots where it's like not a definitive answer, you know, but yeah. it's, it's just so unfortunate that they're, they're where they are where they are with the AFC like this right now. The AFC is literally a mess. Like you don't like the Bills are what seven and six now, and they're not even in the playoffs right now. They're outside looking in, you know. And I, I think the Bills honestly are one of the best teams in the AFC. Yeah, they look good last night, man. They they had they like Josh Allen. Joe Brady's done a really good job with Josh Allen. He looks a lot better, a lot more comfortable. They can run the ball now. It's you know it's it's they're a really good team, man. And the Chiefs don't look the same. The Chiefs look like a much their their offense is pedestrian, man. A lot of drop passes. The receivers aren't that good. You know, Kadarius Tony's he's terrible. You know what I mean? They're very, yeah, very I mean, dude. I, uh, it, dude, if Buffalo gets in, I would say, like, if I just had to pick a team, I, I think Buffalo probably goes through the AFC and yeah. makes the Super Bowl. I mean, I, I, I'm not sold on Jacksonville. Nope. Right now, I mean, Cleveland's in the mix. They're a free, they're playing great, great ball. But you know, I, I, I think they're they're solid. Pittsburgh, I just feel like is on the decline. Yep. Indianapolis in the playoffs, I just don't really trust. Nope. Again, KC is kind of up in the air. Miami yeah. at home. Like, I think Miami needs to get home field advantage. If they could play at home, that'll be the because they play great there. You know, the weather, the high flying offense, all that stuff. But I'm yeah, still but not Buffalo even Buffalo owns Miami, dude. Buffalo like, just whips Miami every time they I know. Play. 
I know. I, I like Buffalo, the way they played last night. I'm like, Josh Allen's a force. He's playing at such a high level. It's just, it's fun to watch for them. I wish we could play like that. You know, it's be, we could be a Jet team do that, but AFC is interesting, man. And you never know what, what the Bengals are browning. He had like, what, 275 yesterday and two touchdowns, which is kind of yeah, crazy. And, and uh, you know, Houston, too. You know, yep. there's they're they banged can, up, man. Too many injuries. Yeah. Schultz, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stroud yeah. now, I guess, too. But yeah. I mean, even if they go out and lose next week and the Jets yeah. win next week, yep. they, what, I, I think the Texans would still have a better record, unfortunately, right? And you got you got um, Denver two's in a mix. Denver's like, they're like a seven, another one. Yep. <laughs> you know, we all everybody discounted Sean Payton. He's got him with seven wins already. Yep, yep. And I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe New England looks a little bit better with Zappy. I mean, they won, you know, against yeah. Pittsburgh. The Chargers and the Raiders aren't just automatic outs. Nope. No, yeah, you know, so. it, and the weird, the weird thing is the Jets actually got roughing the passer call yesterday too, which was nice to see. Like it was like everything happened yesterday. It's like we, like we were scoring touchdowns, which is wild. They're getting calls and like things we haven't seen in weeks were all happening yesterday. It's like wow, like this is what the rest of the NFL looks like. I'm like we almost joined like the NFL offenses yesterday for first time in like seven weeks. Dude, for real, man. Ho- <laughs> and again, hopefully we can we continue to see it. Yeah. Um. And again, you know, I'm not expecting, you know, 30 points, 300 yards, or we have to top that to have success. But it's like, can we can we sustain drives? Can we get in the end zone? Can we score? Are these realistic things that we can do on game day? Or is it just a pipe dream? Yeah, and just it's just be aggressive on third down, be aggressive in the red zone, things we didn't see. Like they like the mindset was just different. And now it's like we we kind of wanted this mindset the last three weeks. The season was on the line. Now your season's really on the line. You lose the dolphins, it's over. There's no it's it. You know, you can't, there's no more fairy tale story. So bring that next week. You find a way to win. If they win next week, man, I'm going to be unbearable because I'm going to be all about the commanders and beating them and going on a run, you know, and they go on a run then. For sure, dude. For sure. I mean, I can't, I can't wait for the game. It's going to be huge. Uh, but dude, is there anything more that you wanted to uh, kind of go over? It's nice that you're happy, dude, because for the last month, I've been getting blamed for your your sadness and your <laughs> anger and your frustration. And that, I don't think it's fair because it's the Jets. It's not me. But it's good to see you smiling and more at ease. You're kind of more relaxed right now. I know it's weird. I like uh, so I got a cold right now. So, you know, I've had it for like past couple of days. I, I can't seem to shake it. Like losing my voice as you know, you guys probably hear. Yeah. Um it's like, I don't know, it's like I'm allergic to like the Jets like <laughs> offense like winning, you know. I don't know, like having success. It's weird. But nah, man, like this this week is pretty much like the Jets super like this is it. Yep. If the Jets go in there and win, the season is changed. Like, like destiny, like we we there's a lot of positivity. But if we go out and lose, it's pretty much a wrap. So we gotta play like our hair's on fire. Yeah, you gotta build off this. Like it's like and the one the one good thing you mentioned was don't get too overconfident. Don't get arrogant. Don't get cocky. Like you want to, you want a dominant game, but you got to build on it. Don't get, you know, don't just. The Dolphins are a very good team when they're playing tonight. So you never know what's going to happen, but just bring that energy next week. And, and if they find a way to win, poof, I may go to the Commanders game then. I, I'll be, I'll be fully in then. I didn't even know that they were playing tonight. I thought it was uh, Green Bay. Uh, Double header. They're playing Tennessee tonight. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Damn. For some reason, I thought it was Green Bay uh, and the Giants. Green Bay and the Giants, yeah. Yeah, Sweet. double hitter. <laughs> hopefully, dude, hopefully Levis torches them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Light them up, beat them up, short week, and the Jets can beat them up. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there uh, if you're cool with that. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I appreciate everybody hanging out, watching, and putting up with the, the raspy voice here. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Jets.